Okay, this time we're going to do one that involves an E. They're asking us to find the same information, increase and decrease in constant intervals, if we have those, local extrema, but this time they're not asking us to find the absolute min or max. So, uh, the first thing we want to do is find your critical numbers. We've got to take the derivative of this, and what we notice right away is that two pieces multiplied together, which requires us to use the product rule. Okay, so when we do that, we have the first piece is x minus 2, so we have the first thing, and then times the derivative of the second. This is e to the u. Derivative of e to the u is e to the u times u primed. So that's e negative 3x times the derivative of the exponent, and that's going to be times negative 3. So e to the u times u primed. Plus the second piece, e negative 3x, and then times the derivative of the first, which is going to be 1 in this case. So now we're going to take all this and we uh, eventually we're going to have to set this equal to zero. So it's probably better for us to simplify this by factoring. We have a, const, uh, a common factor here, e to the negative 3x. That's what we're going to pull out. So e to the negative 3x we have there. And then if we remove this, we get negative 3 times x minus 2. And then if we remove this one, we get 1. Okay, so this is going to be what we have left on the inside. And this part we can simplify. When we do that, we can multiply that out. Negative 3x plus 6 plus 1. And then that can be simplified one more time. And I get 7 minus 3x left on the inside there. Okay, so this is going to be the, the derivative function that we're going to be working with. Now, we look for where the derivative is undefined because that could be a possibility for finding one of our critical numbers. But in this case, uh, this is going to be a smooth curve and this is as well. So there's no places where I'm going to be dividing by zero or square root to negative numbers. So therefore, we know that the, uh, it's, it's differentiable. And then the second thing we're going to look for is we're going to take this and set it equal to zero to find the other critical number. So zero equals e to the negative 3x. And then that's going to be times 7 minus 3x. We're setting this equal to 0. Now, if I take the first one and set it equal to 0, I would have to take the natural log of both sides. And if I try and do that, I can't take the natural log of 0. So therefore, this first piece is not going to give us any answers. However, the second piece we can set equal to 0, 7 minus 3x, set that equal to 0. And we're going to get x is equal to 7 thirds. So 7 thirds is going to be our only critical number. So what we're going to do next is we're going to make a table with the 7 thirds on it. And we have to pick our uh, test points. Okay, so what it'll look like is I have a number line with a 7 thirds here. Let me look straight. Okay, so I have a number line with 7 thirds. I'm going to test the number before 7 thirds and after 7 thirds. Zero is definitely an easy number to try here because I, have, I know that e to the 0 is 1, so I'll make it easy to plug in. Now, the other number I want to check is I want to look at the number 7 thirds. Now, 7 thirds is 2 and 1 third, so therefore, I don't want to use 2 here. I want to use 3. The most common mistake I see is people put the wrong, pick the wrong number. They don't pick one that's in the right interval, and that way you're going to get, you'll get the answer wrong if you do it that way, because 2 would actually give you an interval. In this region here, you want one on the other side of 7 thirds. If you put 0 in here, e to the 0 is 1, but then if you put a 0 on this one, that gives you a positive. This is plus. Now 3, if I put 3 in here, I get a negative here. And what we know about exponentials is that it's always going to give you something greater than 0 because e to the negative 3x would kind of fall down this way and would have a horizontal asymptote at 0. So therefore, we know this part's always going to be positive. So we'll get a plus and a minus as our result. So from this, we can make our conclusion here as far as increasing and decreasing since we have that complete. For increasing, you're going to look for the places on your chart where you have a, a positive. So increasing is going to be from negative infinity to 7 thirds. Then we're going to do decreasing. And decreasing is going to be where you have a negative on your number line. That's going to be from 7 thirds to infinity. So we have our increasing and our decreasing. Next, we want to find our local extrema. From our 
uh, chart right here, we only have a positive and we have a negative. So if it goes plus to minus, we'll use our first derivative test and that tells us that you're going to have a, a relative max. So relative, we can also say local. So local max at x is equal to 7 thirds. Now that we have this, we have to put 7 thirds back in and find the actual coordinate. So local max occurs at x equals 7 thirds, but we want to actually write the coordinate for this. So we're going to do 7 thirds and we're going to put 7 thirds back into the original one. Let's do that. 7 thirds minus 2 and e to negative 3 times 7 thirds. If we work this out, we get a 1 third and then this is e to the negative 7th. So you could also write that as 7 thirds and 1 over 3 e to the 7 and put that on the bottom. This would be the exact coordinate for your local maximum.